In a lot of ways, this league, uh, the consistency since I've been in the league, which has only been four years, but Middle Tennessee has, in a lot of ways, been that standard. You know, they've been here in the league all four years, and uh, the way they play in terms of effort, the physical play, how well coached they are, um, they're a team that, again, is in, in, in many ways has been the standard for the four years I've been in the league. So for us to start out in league and get a win is, is huge. Um, it's just not a team that you can come out and do things halfway and do things without being extremely physical. They're a very good basketball team. They're a very well coached basketball team. Uh, they're a very physical basketball team. And in the first half, uh, we didn't respond uh, to a lot of those things very well. And in the second half, I thought we were certainly much better. I thought the crowd was fantastic. Uh, and then we got on a couple runs. And uh, it wasn't something that was, a, I don't think, a 20 to 0 run or anything. It was just grinding it the entire half. Uh, and again, I was proud for how the guys responded uh, after the halftime break. It's not so much what I said. It's uh, the dry erase board in my hand had a meeting. No, <laughs> it was. Uh, to be honest with you, it was very. Um, it wasn't a lot of yelling and screaming. It was a lot of. Here's the roadmap to be successful, and this is it. And we told you guys before the game that it's about uh, the level of physicality, how hard you played, how bought in you are. And right now we're not doing it. And so, this roadmap that I'm giving you. <laughs> won't work unless you do those things. And I can't, I can't give you guys the edge. And they had to get that themselves. In the second half, they did that. Um, they were very, very um, uh, into the game uh, from the start of the second half. And then again, the X's and O's work a little bit better once you have uh, the energy. And ha -Ha got in quick foul trouble for the start of both halves. But yeah. you feel like you really got some good minutes at him the last week. Really good minutes, and uh, what I told him after he got his fourth foul, I said, "I'm not keeping you over here, at, you know, for a long time. You're going to go back in. If you get a foul, you get a foul. Just don't make it a silly foul." And uh, he played, I thought, very, very hard. Was very effective. Made his free throws and affected the game on both ends of the floor. So uh, he was very important. I think our depth, especially in the front court, was a, a key part of the a key component to the game because. We had two guys foul out, Ha Ha, who was in the most foul trouble. Um, I thought Lewis was good, and uh, that depth I thought was an important piece of the puzzle. What's your message to the guys defensively when, when the game is being called tight like that, especially in the second half? What, what do you tell them to do to try to counter that, or do you tell them anything? Well, a, a variety of things. I mean, you talk about specific plays where we're trying to uh, deny the handoffs, and it's called on us every single time. And so we say, adjust. You're going to have to go under. You're going to have to flat out beat them to that spot. But don't do the same thing over and over and over. Uh, the hand checks, we, you know, again, you have to play things X and O wise maybe a little bit differently, but you have to play with some savvy, which you get, you have hopefully with an experienced team. And I thought we adjusted okay. And then the other side of that is on the offensive end, try and use it to your advantage. You know, try and go to the basket, try and get fouled, and get to the free throw line uh, if they're putting their hands on you. Did you get an explanation for that fourth foul? Uh -huh. Say that again. Did you get an explanation for that fourth foul? I did not. Uh -huh. I did not. I did not. Um, it was an out of bounds play, and it was a conscious decision on my part not to pull him, which was absolutely the wrong decision, because <laughs> he got a foul with exactly zero seconds off the clock. And I got his fourth. Um, I think what happened is there was a guy cutting, he's got his hands in there. And again, at that point in the game, I mean, uh, it was probably four or five minutes into the second half. It was, I think, clear at that point that it was being called very, very close. And so he needs to get his hands out. But I think he got his hands in the mix when a guy was cutting on an out of bounds play. What's it been like coaching a player like that? He, he was the star at the end of the year last year. Uh, it was a lot of hype around him coming in this year. And then you, know, you went to him and said, we're just going to be a different role. Uh, you know, it takes a pretty special player, I guess, to. Uh, well, and I've said this from the start. Ha is a special player, but he is a truly special person. And, and I mean that in the best possible way. I think he's a very uh, high character person that can see the big picture with things. Now, I will say this I have six starters, I have three front court starters. Um, and, you know, his role is certainly not defined. And I think you'll see that moving forward that I'm probably going to tinker with starting lineup some um, because he is a starter. And he's a starter that's played six man. Chris Coakley is a starter that came off the bench the first four, five, six games of the season. Tosin is a starter that uh, has come off the bench this year. And so I have three starters in the front court. And so, you know, in terms of his role, it wasn't where I went to him and said, hey, you're a six man this year, because he's a starter. And, uh, and I think he'll start some moving forward with the season. And his role, candidly, is going to be what, his role, what he wants his role to be. Uh, I want him to be a scorer, a shot blocker, an excellent defender, a high-level passer, uh, and an unbelievable rebounder. And most of those things, 
you know, there might be shots that I say, hey, turn down those shots, but he can have as many good passes as he wants, as many rebounds as he wants, as many block shots as he wants. And so his ceiling is, uh, my job is to push him. And I, I had a candid conversation last week with him that I'm going to push him as hard as possible and make sure he's not comfortable with status quo, that he, he needs to get to another level. So that's a long answer for a short question. You guys in the second half pretty much dominated on the, on the rebound. Did you have won this game without? The, the job you did in the second half, I mean, rebound. No, the rebounding was crucial. In the first half, um, we got absolutely obliterated uh, on the boards. Part of the reason we didn't get any rebounds was they didn't miss any shots. And uh, But on the offensive end, I think we got two offensive rebounds. And for us, that's unacceptable. We're too long, we're too athletic, we're too big, uh, and we allowed ourselves to get boxed out. And that kind of goes back into the, the physicality of the game that we didn't come in in the first half ready to compete in that way. Again, with your point guards, you get, I think, one turnover between the two of them, you know, seven or eight assists, one turnover between those two. How big was their play in that? Great, great, especially against Middle Tennessee where you're seeing different looks. You're seeing the 1-3-1 one, one at the half court. Um, and the ball's, I mean, the ball's in their hands, and just, there were uh, press situations too, full court. So proud of the guys, but uh, it, that's an important, important element. The assist turnover ratio for our team is, has been very, very good throughout the the season, both conference-wise, nationally, it's a really good number, uh, and that's going to be a number that needs to stay uh, very good for us to be where we want to get to. Offensively, uh, it does get you out of sync, but you just got to stay mentally tough and know it's part of the game. It's going to be stops; uh, they're going to make runs, we're going to make runs. So when the refs are calling, I like that. Just be aggressive, and the whistle. I know we felt kind of it was one-sided, but the whistle went both ways. Every time we were driving, they were putting their hands on us. We were getting the call, so. Uh, just staying aggressive when we do have the ball to stay in rhythm. What's it like at halftime you go to the locker room and you're down by that amount? What's the message that you guys send to each other? And what was the mentality? Uh, it was, we'd been in the situation before last game. We got down 18 and coaches uh, and a couple more words, but he said, just pick it up. We need to get stops defensively and play harder. They shot 66% in the first half and 20% in the second half. I know, you know, was it kind of a relief? I mean, they were just kind of throwing them up and making them, was it a relief to just finally see some shots not go down? Or? Uh, a little bit, but we matched their intensity and we played harder than they played in the second half. I know there weren't a lot of misses in the first half, but they, they beat you pretty bad on the boards in the mm -hmm. first half. And you turn around in the second half and beat them pretty bad. What was the difference there? I mean, what, what, why were you able to hire a rebound and rebound them like that? Just going back to playing harder than they did. Uh, first half, they came out and punched us in the mouth, and we just kind of sat back and took it. And second half, uh, after Coach jumped into us, we kind of picked it up and matched their intensity and played harder than they did. Harvey, you've had a lot of experience throughout your career, going from one school to the other, even in different situations. What's it like playing with a player like Ha Ha and his skill set to have someone like that come start at the beginning of the year and then go to the role as a starter and still have team chemistry? I, I think it has a lot to do with HaHa -Ha and the type of person he is. Um, he's not one looking for the spotlight or the shine or anything, and it's all about the team and how well we do and, and winning. And having him in the back line defensively when he's in, it makes my job on the perimeter a lot easier. If I get beat, if I get out of position, I know he's down there. And even if he doesn't block the shots, people are scared of him down there. How big was it that he did not foul out? Because it seems like you guys are Three digs with four fouls for a lot of the same. Yeah, we would have had to go real small. His being able to stay in the game mentally and just, I guess, mature enough to be able to play with four fouls and not get that fifth. Uh, felt like it was kind of hard when it left, but I heard Coach uh, Battle on the bench saying, that's the one. And I was like, nah, it's, that's not going in. And then hit the backboard and bounced in. Biggest difference in your opinion from from the two halves. I know I guess you got in foul trouble pretty early in the second half, but you had to. Yeah, the I had to get into the game. Uh, to be real, to be honest, uh, started the game. I don't think I was in it like I should have been in it, and um, it shows on the fouls. Uh, just went in, and made two bonehead fouls, picked up two quick ones real fast, and on the bench, and um, told myself the second half I wasn't gonna do that. But <laughs> got in the game, picked up two cheap ones again. Then coach pulled me to the side. Uh, when I was coming out, he talked to me. He was like, uh, 
got to be focused and be ready. He's going to put me back in two minutes, and um, I'm going to have to play without fouling. And that's what I did. Mentally, how hard is it to play with four fouls, with how aggressive you play on defense? And that's kind of your role down low to affect shots. How hard is it to play with those four fouls? It's kind of hard if you, if you really think about it. But, like, I didn't think about it. Like, I was playing like I didn't have no fouls at all. So just play like I would normally play without no fouls. But it's kind of hard pl playing with four fouls and knowing that you got four fouls. Uh, you just can't be as aggressive as you would be. So. What's it been like coming off the bench? Starring last? Uh, it's no different. I'm just, just five people starting and um, just a different role, I guess. Uh, but I really like coming off the bench. Uh, I can get a better feel for the game actually coming off the bench and uh, see what's going on. And um, what, it's what coach wants, you know. It's what he thinks is best, best for the team. When Jared first came to you with that idea, what was your reaction to your initial reaction? What's that? To come off the bench. Oh, my first reaction coming off the bench was like, it's no big deal. It's what coach wants, you know. Uh, Campaign. Chris Chris Coakley is playing pretty good. Uh, Tosin is playing pretty good. And um, to be real, uh, either either one of us can start. Uh, it really wouldn't change the difference. And uh, as long as we win, we're happy.